The next time you drive by Horlick Field, take a few seconds to visualize this moment in time. Imagine it's 1943. While various parts of the globe were dealing with war, several U.S. Midwestern cities, including Racine, opened their baseball fields to a new professional baseball league played by women. As you look at Horlick Field, think back to what it must have been like nearly 70 years ago to see professional baseball played in Racine, Wisconsin. When they had those trains out in the, out in the field there, where the railroad tracks were, that the, the kids would, would get up on those uh, boxcars and they'd watch us play ball. The Racine Bells were one of the original teams in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, a women's professional baseball league founded by chewing gum mogul Philip K. Wrigley. The Bells opened play in that first year playing their home games at Horlick Field. A team with strong pitching, solid defense, timely hitting, and speed on the bases. I knew how good a team Racine was, and I thought, well, you know, maybe I wouldn't be accepted there as much as some of the other teams because they were so good. But when I got there, they were just great. The Bells won the first championship in the new league's history, defeating the Kenosha Comets in a best of five series for the 1943 title. Leading that team was pitcher Mary Nesbitt, who won 26 games, Eleanor Dapkus, who led the league with 10 home runs, and Sophie Curies, who stole a league-leading 44 bases that season. Sophie Curies taught me how to, to hook slide. I, I used to just go in uh, either foot, you know, feet first, and she taught me how to hook slide. The AAGPBL began as a way to keep baseball in the public eye, as the majority of men were away at war. Although the league never totally played regulation baseball, the games had several elements of the sport that closely resembled the national pastime. One of the elements that did not resemble their male counterparts was the girls' uniforms. Uniforms worn by the players were belted short-sleeved tunic dresses with a slight flare of the skirt. Out in the field, it wasn't too bad. I always felt sorry for the pitchers because I thought the skirts got in the way of, of them handling it. But some of the girls then would pin their skirt so that their arm wouldn't brush against the side of, of it while they were pitching. In addition, players received a beauty kit and instructions on how to use it so they could be as physically attractive as possible. Players were not permitted to smoke, have short hair, drink in public, and were required to wear lipstick at all times. The Bells won two of their first four league championships and went on to win 473 and lose 425 in its eight-year stay in Racine. In 1946, the Bells captured their second title after a league best record of 74-38 in the regular season. They defeated the 1945 champs, the Rockford Peaches, four games to two to win the 46 championship. We played 110, 120 games a year, double headers on, on Sundays and holidays, and practiced in the morning and played at night. After eight seasons in Racine, the Bells ran into financial difficulties and could not come up with the resources to keep the team in Racine. There were so many more things for people to do. You know, they had bowling and television was coming into, and they had uh, Major League Baseball again and so many things that uh, the tendons just kept dropping off until, you know, they just couldn't afford it. At the end of the 1950 season, the team moved to Battle Creek, Michigan. According to one published report, many of the founding team members refused to move with the team to Battle Creek. The All-American Girls Professional Baseball League folded on September 5, 1954. It was the greatest thing that ever happened to me, and I can't believe it today that we get so much attention and so much publicity and stuff like that, and they always say that we were pioneers in sports. And if we had anything to do at all with Title IX, which they say equalization f sports for girls and boys, I, that's, I'm really proud of that. We really accomplished something. <laughs>